What's up, math fans? Um, today we're doing how to solve circle and line systems. Again, you should know a lot of stuff. So I know there's a lot of pressure on you to remember a bunch of different things that I said in a bunch of different videos. One is you gotta know what a system is and methods of solving, including elimination and substitution. Also, you should be familiar and comfortable with solving quadratic equations. What's a quadratic equation? Well, you'll see soon if you didn't already see my five other videos on quadratic equations. Uh, but just to relieve some of the pressure, uh, I'm gonna tell you a little story. My niece called me the other day because she knows that I really, really like math and I really like numbers. So she thought maybe I was concerned about this story that she had to tell me. She said that there was a fight between 19 and 20, 21. All right, back to the real lesson at hand. So take a look at this system right here, where system is more than one equation at the same time. And you gotta be able to recognize that this is considered a linear equation and this is an equation of a circle. So a linear equation you can recognize because the highest exponent of the x value is one and a quadratic equation is when the highest exponent of the x value is two. So this is gonna lead us to a quadratic, but I'm not there yet. So first I know that this is a line and this is a circle, and if you wanna imagine this on a graph, there's a way to solve it graphically where you just graph it. So I got my x-axis, my y, and graph paper is, is best, I think, for this. So uh, y equals three x minus five means that uh, mx plus b. So my intercept is negative five. My y-intercept is negative five. One, two, three, four, five. I have a point right there. And my slope, my rise over run is three over one. So I'm gonna go up three over one, up three over one. And you need a straight edge and make that as straight as you can and as accurate as you can. I kind of mess up, even on graph paper, I kind of shift it a little bit. So that's why I'd rather do this algebraically. Um, now this thing is a circle and you gotta recognize that equation of a circle. This is the radius, it's x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So the radius is the square root of this which is just five, so and my center is zero, zero. So I can go out to five, up to five, left to five, and down to five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And to make it perfect, or as close to it as you can, I, use, uh, I suggest you use a compass. So you're gonna get a circle that kind of looks like that. And I know my students like to make fun of me, oh, it looks like an oval, or, well, I'm not a great grapher, and that's why I'd rather do this algebraically. But what's the point? The point is to find the solution. And what is a solution to a system? It's where the two equations meet. So here is one solution. I'll call that solution one. And here, uh, right there, is solution two. That one looks kind of obvious. I think I already know what it is. I'm still gonna do it algebraically. So, algebra tells me that my two methods are either elimination or substitution. And because y is alone, it is begging for substitution. So here's why, put that there, replace it, switch it, all right? So I'm gonna write what I see, except I take out the y and put in that, that thing, that other expression. So I see x squared plus three x minus five, that's my y, squared, still have the square because that's the exponent of two equals 25. And so many people instinctively distribute the square and they say, oh, that's 9x squared plus 25 and I'm done. No, something squared means write it twice. So that's x squared drops down plus 3x minus 5 times itself equals 25. That's what squared is. And you should be great at FOIL by now or distributive property by now. But I'm going to show my work just in case. Um, so first outer, that's 9x squared minus 15x. I'm multiplying the terms. Then I'm gonna multiply these two terms and then these two terms. So this is another negative 15x and that's a positive 25 and then everything else will drop down. So my x squared drops down and my equals 25 drops down. And if you're good at math, you can immediately subtract 25 from both sides. Oh, but which 25 am I subtracting? Does it matter or are they both gonna give you zero? And don't you want zero? Because what did I say earlier? My hint was we're looking at quadratic equations. So guess what? Let me combine like terms. X squared plus nine X squared is 10 X squared. Minus 15 and another minus 15 is negative 30 X. 
and that's it. There's no third term, but usually you're looking at ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And then you can use your quadratic formula where a is 10, b is negative 30, and c is nothing or zero. And you just plug it into x equals negative b plus or minus square root, blah, blah. There's a song for that. I'll let you look that up on your own. I'm not using this song because I know how to factor. I'm going to actually try to factor this. So I'm going to take out a GCF, a greatest common factor. This one's not the opposite of FOIL or people call it reverse FOIL or some product method. I don't need that here. I see a GCF. Always look for a GCF first. 10 goes into both. Wait a minute. 10x goes into both. You can actually take out the x also. So 10x goes into both and then you're left with x minus 3. 10x times x is 10x squared. 10x times 3 is negative 30x. So I'm good. I factored correctly equals 0. And what you could do at any step is divide by 10. You could, have, you could divide by 10 immediately, getting rid of that 10, turning this into a 3, and 0 divided by 10 is still 0. So you could have divided by 10 there. You can divide by 10 right now, divide both sides by 10, and that 10 will cancel out. Or you can create your t-chart, because if something times something is 0, either 10x equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. And now I can divide by 10. So any step along the way, you could have divided by 10. I divide by 10 at the end, and x equals 0 divided by 10 is 0. Here I add 3, and x equals 3. So I'm done. I got two solutions. That's great, right? Wait a second. What are you looking for? I'm looking for two points of intersection. And points of intersection are x comma y, not x comma x. So what do I do? I go back. You pick your favorite equation. To be safe, you can pick both. One at a time, now I'm going to plug in 0 for x. So that's 3 times 0, y equals uh, 3 times 0 minus 5. That's 0 minus 5. So when x is 0, y equals negative 5. Negative 5. And guess what? 0, negative 5, that makes perfect sense. I told you I knew what that, first, uh, that point was right there. So that's 0, negative 5. This one I actually had to do some calculations. X is 3, so let me just plug in 3, so that's y equals 3 times 3 minus 5. Again, I'm using the easier one, the first one, but you can do it with the second one. Um, and 9 minus 5 is 4, so y equals 4 here. So those are my two solutions, two coordinates, 0, negative 5, and 3, comma, 4. All right, so solving a circle line equation, circle line, not the boat that goes around New York City, no, no. Solving a circle line system is the same as solving any system. Linear equations or a quadratic linear system, circle line system, they're all the same. You use some method of algebraic solution, create some kind of equation, and you solve it and check your solutions. All right, thanks for watching. See ya.